Hello and welcome back to Awakening to Your Story TV, the place to learn, get inspired, and be supported with heart-centered solutions for your everyday problems. I'm your host, author, emotional heart expert, and self-love enthusiast, Alicia Hartzell. Today we're going to talk about how to access peace when you are stressed. Our question is this, Dear Alicia, I have been experiencing high stress and anxiety, and it is leaving me exhausted and emotionally on edge. I was wondering if you could give me some tools or practices that might help. How do I access peace when I am feeling so stressed? Signed, Pursuing Peace. Now I could tell you to take some time and deeply breathe, to take off your shoes and to plant your feet in the ground, to go out in nature and look for all of the beauty, or one of my favorite stress reducers, to meditate. In the Awakening to Your Story book and the Starter Kit, we even use positive cellular memories to help you access those feelings on the other side of stress and anxiety. Now all of these things allow you to insert a shift in focus and slow down the momentum of the stress and anxiety. Choosing methods like these can be very powerful ways to find relief from your symptoms. But what happens when that momentum behind the stress doesn't seem surmountable? Well, let's take a deeper look at the big picture. Let's start by looking at the object of your focus, that stress and anxiety. The usual instigator of stress and anxiety is fear. When fear creeps in, it relentlessly pulls your focus. Fear holds many different kinds of voices that run through your mind. And before you know it, you think those voices of fear are telling you the truth, when really they are just echoing the limiting beliefs that have been picked up along the way. Now these limiting beliefs are fueled by fear and breed worry and anxiety, all the while working to convince you that you are not enough, you're not worthy or able. Here's the thing about fear. It will always act in resistance to love. When you are in alignment with the divine source energy of love, all resistance falls away and you find yourself in flow and in harmony with that energy of life. This divine source energy of love was woven right into your humanity by your divinity and it acts as your inner compass always calling you back to that place of love and truth. Now here are a few telltale signs that you will recognize about love. It is filled with synchronicity. It is filled with soul tickling experiences and open doors and tangible freedom of the heart. Love holds all of your essential truth and it always serves your higher good and it is always an option for you. And this is where you find the peace that you were looking for. It is fundamental to you and it is woven right into your being along with all of that divine source energy of love. Now fear contradicts all of these things and layers of limiting beliefs on top of that make it even harder to access. When left unchecked, fear and those layers of limiting beliefs can create a focus that can make it really hard to find the peace that you're looking for because it feels out of reach. To access peace, you have to find your way back into that alignment to the source energy of love. Now there are endless ways to do this, but here are five tools that I think will help you. Tool number one is the stream kayak principle. Now we look at this principle a lot in my first book, Awakening to Your Story, which can be found on amazon.com. And we also find it in the Awakening to Your Story handbook. It's actually a deep dive into this principle and offers you tons of exercises to help you fully utilize it. And that can be found on the website. But here are the basics of the principle. Life is a river that flows in one direction, downstream. The current of the river of life is that divine source energy of love. On the river of life, each person gets a boat and that boat is your consciousness. Everything you need to get navigate the river of life can be found right there in your boat within your consciousness. Now, knowing where you are in relationship to the river and your boat helps you identify the challenges for what it is. It offers you a visual that helps you find a way back to where it is you want to go. Now, the ideal situation is to be in your boat in flow with the river, enjoying your journey and basking in your truth and embodying that divine source energy of love perfectly in harmony but often we find that there is trouble in the water. 
You can have paddling upstream where you are fighting that current of life. You can also have two people in one boat where you're struggling to control or dependent on someone else to navigate your consciousness for you. You can be out of your boat altogether where you are flailing and drowning on the river. All of these things have their emotional and physical side effects, stress, anxiety, exhaustion, and fatigue. In any given experience, if you can pause and find where you are on the river of life, you can plot your way back to the ideal position. Using this principle helps you neutralize some of that stress right off the bat. Some of your power returns back to you just by looking at that bigger picture and seeing all of the elements for what they are and by finding your boat again in that picture. Now again, the River of Life Handbooks walks you through exercises for each scenario. If you wanna do some deeper work, I highly recommend using it. Okay, number two is make your stress productive. Acknowledge the stress as an indicator that something is out of alignment. The stress is there to help you, but you have to use it rather than let it become a way of life. Let it illustrate what it is you need, desire, and where it is that you want to go. Let it help you find the language for the limiting beliefs that are already ready to be released, and then let it help you build the language for your truth. Change focus and slow down the momentum of that stress by using it to make it build a path towards your peace. Use a thought like this. This stressor isn't happening to me. It's happening to help me find clarity for what it is I want. And that brings us right to number three. Three is know what it is you want. When you have an arsenal of stress-filled thoughts coming at you, it isn't enough to just say, I want peace. You have to know what you want as much as you know that stress. So after you make the stress productive and you let it give you language to both sides, your job is then to take that language of what it is you want and run with it. Spell it out for yourself in every way possible. Think about it. Write about it. Meditate and pray about it. Daydream about it and let your heart dance with it and be tickled by it. Spending time building a connection to how these desires feel and what they offer you not only gets you back into your boat, it helps you connect to that source energy of love and truth. And as you do it, it builds up your focus. And that brings us to number four, the power of appreciation. Appreciation can help you get right back into your boat and have it pointing downstream almost instantaneously. In the midst of those stressors, just start calling out the things that you appreciate. Count them down. Even if you have to start by putting yourself in a timeout and closing your eyes and putting your hands on your heart and just breathing. I appreciate my breath. I appreciate my heart beating. Then move outward and appreciate anything and everything that you can think of in a rapid fire style. This shifts your focus and allows you to plug right into that source energy of love. Then just keep reaching for appreciation one thought at a time. Number five, your thoughts are tools too. Not only are they tools, they are your greatest tool because your thoughts literally build your reality. So keep reaching for thoughts that feel better rather than replaying the old ones that are tied to the limiting beliefs and fear. Incremental shifts in thinking will get you there. You just have to keep on reaching one thought at a time. And before you know it, stress will start to lift and you will have those feelings of peace that you want. Remember, finding that inner peace is a process, but no matter where you find yourself, it is always an option. Just keep noticing your thoughts and if they are fueled by love or fear, then keep reaching to build up the ones fueled by love. You can do this. I know that you can. And know that until next time, I am holding a place of love for you where your inner peace, well, it's undeniable. For more support, information, and inspiration, join me at awakeningtoyourstory.com.